This video is brought to you by Sayrite. Visit Sayrite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. We will be recovering the old seating vinyl on this power boat. This video tutorial will highlight reupholstering the backrest of the aft bench seating. On the inside of the backrest is foam and a backer board which gives the backrest the desired shape and also provides a method to screw it to the stern rails. To prepare, we need to remove the backrest from the stern rails via the screws. Cindy, a professional seamstress with Sailrite, will show you every step required to DIY. Do it yourself using supplies and tools from Sailrite. We're ready to work on these two cushions that go in the back of the boat. Um, this is a bench and it's stapled to a backer board. This bench cushion will be covered in a separate video. And it has hinges on the back side. And this is the backrest that goes with this cushion. It's got a zipper in it and there's also a board in here. And this is attached to uh, stainless steel poles that hold it in place. So we need to make this side vinyl also because this will be visible. So we're going to start with this one. To get measurements, we're going to remove the cover from the foam. You could actually get the measurements while it's on the foam if you'd like. Okay, to make the pattern or the covers for this cushion, we're going to measure this one instead of taking it all apart. It's basically just a rectangle. And I'm going to measure from seam to seam. She'll measure from seam to seam, but she'll add a half inch for sewing seam allowance on both sides. And that's about five and three quarters, and I want to add an inch to that, half an inch seam on each side. So my measure, measurement there will be six and three quarters. Use this helpful illustration to see the anatomy of a cushion. We'll be referring to a lot of these terms. We're measuring the top plate right now. 61. This measures 60, so I'm going to add the half an inch on each end and make it 61. And the bottom should be the same, but I'm going to check it just to be sure. It's five and three quarters by 60. So this one I'm also going to cut six and three quarters by 61. And the boxing. Now we have the top and bottom plate. She's now measuring the width of the boxing. It's three inches wide, so I will cut that at four inches. And I'm gonna need a piece. Now that we have the width of the boxing, we need the length. This will not include the zipper plaque. About 68 inches long. Now we'll measure the bottom side where the zipper plaque is. We need to add extra, as we did earlier, with the top boxing. And the length of the zipper plaque is also going to be 68, but the width of that will be 3 by 68, and I need two of them, one for each side of the zipper. The boxing on the bottom will contain a zipper, and that zipper will take up one inch per each side, our boxing equals three inches, so our desired finished width is three inches. Use this equation to figure your strips for your zipper plaque. You'll need two strips. From those measurements, she's marking the vinyl seating material. This seating material is upside down, so she's marking on the back side. After it's all marked, she'll use scissors and cut it out. We're going to use a number five uh, zipper for this, so I'm going to cut this to length. This is all the material we need to create this back rest. We'll have a few additional components later on. And I have one slide, and these are the two zipper pieces. This is my boxing piece and the top and bottom plate, and this is the cording that we're going to use to put around it. To start with, we'll need to build the zipper plaque. Okay, I'm going to apply the zipper to my two um, pieces and I've allowed an extra inch on this band for the zipper so I want to fold that back an inch and I'm going to lay the folded edge at the middle of the zipper teeth. The fold is directly over the center of the teeth. And put this edge of the foot up against the zipper teeth. 
And if you want to check this as you go, you can use your seam gauge and check it. The right side of the zipper foot is right up against the zipper's teeth, even though there's fabric between the zipper foot and the teeth. We'll sew a straight stitch. Typically, we like to sew approximately a six millimeter long straight stitch all along the length of the zipper flap. As Cindy sews, she folds the material back to one inch, then lays it over top of the center of the zipper teeth. At the beginning and end of your stitching, do some reversing to lock the stitch in place. Now she's measuring for the other side. It should also be one inch. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. We're starting from the opposite end of the zipper. That way we're still sewing against the right side of the presser foot. This ensures the stitch is the same distance from the teeth of the zipper. Let's go ahead and move on. So the zipper should end up the same size as your boxing. And this one is. If it happens to be a little bit bigger, you can trim off the edges out here. I would just trim a little bit off of each side so that the zipper stays in the center. Don't forget to install the slider. The slider has a fat side and a smaller side. She's pushing the smaller side onto the zipper's teeth pulling the teeth the apart and the slider slides right on. Next we'll install a prefabricated vinyl piping to both the top and bottom plate. And before we sew the cording on the top and bottom plate I want to match these rounded corners on the board. So I'm going to lay it right on my plate piece. Both top and bottom plates will have all four of their corners rounded like this. I'm going to start about in the center of this piece so that my, where I connect the cording ends up here at the bottom um, in the middle. And I'm going to start stitching a little bit away from the edge, the end. You'll find multiple colors of this prefabricated vinyl piping at Sailrite. Cindy starts at the center, the bottom side of our cushion, and she leaves a four or five inch tail unsewn so the other side of piping can be joined to it later on. This prefabricated piping has slits already in the flange, but installing a few extra slits that are a little bit deeper is not a bad idea. It will allow the piping to take the curve even better. Notice that Cindy will bury the needle, lift her presser foot, roll the assembly while the needle's buried, lower the presser foot and continue to sew. That way she keeps the needle up against the piping. The next corner is being reached, but we're going to skip ahead to where we have to join the piping together. I'm going to stitch almost up to where I started and trim off my cording. That's not going to work. And nippers will not cut piping. Scissors will. A couple of inches beyond where I started. And then I want to open up this vinyl cording, separate it. To sew this piping to the plate, we used a white thread. You may want to consider using a colored thread that will match the piping, as this first stitch may show up after the assembly is all sewn together. Trim out just the cording and cut the original piece to the same length as the cording. And then tuck this one inside and fold it back over and finish stitching. As just discussed, we used a white thread with our blue piping. We need to make sure that when we sew the assembly to the boxing that we sew close enough to the piping that the white thread does not show up when the assembly is finally completed. Piping is now installed to both the top and the bottom plate. Up next, we'll join the boxing. Okay, before I put the boxing and the zipper on these pieces, I've got the uh, welting on both of them. I'm going to mark the center on all of the pieces. And when I stitch, I'm going to start stitching at the center and stitch from the center 
out to the sides. We'll mark the center position with the scissors by creating a notch on both plates and on the boxing pieces, including the zipper plaque. Then we'll take this assembly to the sewing machine. First we'll start with the boxing and we'll sew it onto the side of the plate. Notice that the notches are directly over top of each other and we'll start sewing there at that center position on one of the long sides. The outside surfaces are facing each other. This Alterfeed LS1 sewing machine has a welting or cording tunnel built into the standard foot and the tunnel is allowing the piping to be fed underneath the foot nicely. When we reach a corner, watch what Cindy does. The needle is buried in the assembly so we don't lose our spot and the corner is clipped at a few locations but never clip in deeper than the seam allowance. In this situation it's almost a half inch. As discussed earlier, if significant rotation is needed or twisting of the fabric, the needle is buried and the presser foot lifted, assembly rotated, presser foot lowered and continue to sew. She will stop sewing here and she'll explain it. I'm going to stop stitching right there because my zipper is going to come up to here and I don't know exactly how long I want this yet. So I'm going to leave this part of it free and go back and sew the other end from the center out. She'll start sewing the other direction at the center location. She starts sewing about an inch over top of the previous stitches. The stitches that are before those previous stitches are the stitches that preliminarily held or holds the piping in place. Here we're skipping ahead and showing coming to a corner. You'll notice that uh, she does that same procedure there to wrap around the corner, lifting the presser foot and burying the needle several times until she's happy. Then she'll stop sewing short of that boxing in so that the zipper plaque can be joined to it. She'll stop sewing here. Now it's time to join the zipper plaque. She's going to find the center notches that she made on the assemblies and match them up. Same procedure, start from the center location. I'm going to take this out from under the needle and put a zipper stop on here. We forgot to install a zipper stop. We're going to do that now before we come to joining the zipper plaque to the boxing ends. Here she's using some scrap fabric to create a stop. And that goes on the back side. Always be sure the slider is installed before installing both of the stops. The slider has already been installed previously. When sewing over teeth, if you don't have a heavy duty sewing machine like the Serite Ultrafeed LS1, you may need to walk the needle through the teeth by rotating the balance wheel by hand. If these stitches are put about a half inch away from the end, they will not be visible when the cushion's complete. And then I'm going to come back and stitch these two. I'm not going to stitch them together. I'm going to fold this back so that this edge is finished. And I'm going to leave the zipper long and stitch it into here so that they lap over each other but there's a little bit of breathing room here since it's vinyl it'll let the vinyl it'll let the cushion breathe just a little bit on each end leaving the two ends of the boxing unsewn is not a bad idea it will allow for some breathability though we are not using a dry fast foam so it won't dry out very quickly if it gets wet anyway but it's still not a bad idea. This is a preference and not a rule. Okay. Here you can see the one side of the boxing is folded back and the other side sewn directly on top of it. One thing we forgot to mention, it's always a good idea to sew as close as possible to the piping when sewing this last stitch. That way it hides the previous stitch that secured the piping to the plate. So when we sew the other side on over here, your zipper will look like this and then your tab will tuck up underneath there and be protected. And I'm going to do the same, the other side the same way. The exact same procedure, sewing the opposite direction starting at the center location. We're going to skip ahead. Here a stop has been installed just as we did at the other end. She'll fold this assembly back. There's a lot more fabric here, but that's not a big deal because it just folds back and then sew over the top. 
just like we did on the other end. Before she sews it, she's going to create some notches here at the corner to help the boxing to take the curve in a better fashion. You'll notice that she doesn't always do reversing at the beginning and the end of her stitch when she's sewing this assembly together. That's because she typically will start on top of the past stitch by an inch or two, or she'll either sew over the last stitch by an inch or two. Doing this has sort of the same effect as reversing the sewing machine to lock the stitch in place. Perfect, our boxing has now been joined to the first plate. Okay, we're ready to sew the um, other plate on. Just make sure that you get the, where you've ended the cording at the zipper area rather than at the top. And match up your lines again, your clips. For this last plate to be installed, all we need to do is sew around the entire perimeter, just as we did with the first plate. When a corner is reached, a few relief notches will help the boxing to take the turn. When sewing the boxing onto the plate, it's always a good idea to have this last stitch inside the edge of the first stitch that attaches the piping. That way you never see that first stitch. If you get on the outside of that stitch, it's possible you may see the white threads that preliminarily attach the piping to the plates. We'll show this last corner, then move on. As you can see, when a corner is reached, even a professional will roll the balance wheel by hand so that she has optimal control burying the needle and lifting the foot to pivot the fabric, then lowering the foot before you sew. If the foot is not lowered before you sew, the sewing machine will have a jam. Because the boxing and the zipper plaque boxing were not sewn together, she carefully creates a fold there so that it's equal to the other side that was sewn to the opposite plate. Watch carefully. Pretty soon something will fall off the sewing table. This will distract Cindy and she will not bury the needle all the way down when she is making adjustments to the fabric. If you watch closely, the needle will bend while she is adjusting the fabric due to this fact. There, something fell off the table. Cindy is distracted. The needle's not buried all the way down and it bends. The needle did not bend severely. Had it bent more severely, when Cindy pressed on the foot pedal, it may have hit metal below. We call that needle deflection. So instead of the needle passing by the hook in the optimal position, it may actually hit a metal piece down below. To avoid this, always bury the needle to the thickest part of the shaft when adjusting fabric at a stopped position. Before I get all the way down to my clips, I want to check and make sure that they're matched up and I haven't pushed or scooted something more than I should have. And these look like they're going to be pretty close. This is smooth on both sides, so I'm going to keep stitching. One thing you can do to make this area a little easier to work with, instead of having to hold it all, is you can stitch these two pieces together first before you put the other side of the boxing on. And then you won't have to be folding and holding all of that at one time. You just need enough to hold it together while you're working with it. When doing this, always sew within your seam allowance. Ours is a half inch, so this should be perfect. And I also want to open my zipper up a little bit so I can get the cushion turned right side out when I'm finished. Let's skip ahead to the end and show what it looks like once we turn it right side out. Since our piping is blue and we used a white thread, if you see stitches, you can always go back over the cover and sew closer to the piping to help conceal those stitches. This, we think, looks pretty good. It's not a bad idea to plump up old foam before installing the cover. We're going to apply a layer of this quarter inch sew foam to this. Um, the foam is in uh, pretty good shape, but we just want to plump it up a little bit. 
This thin foam is available in a variety of thicknesses and has hundreds of uses. Check it out at sayarite.com. So to do that, I'm going to put a light coating of the uh, 77 adhesive on the foam. Coating the old foam and this new polyurethane foam with fabric backing with the Super 77 spray adhesive by 3M will allow us to bond everything to the old foam so it doesn't move around when we put the cover in place. Once the cover is in place, we don't have to worry about it much because the cover will hold it right where it needs to be for the life of the cushion. We recommend the spun bonded polyester backing of the polyurethane foam with fabric backing be up against the old foam. That way, if it has any wrinkles, they will not show up through the fabric once it's applied to the top surface of the foam. Notice our foam wasn't long enough. It is quite acceptable to butt it up to each other as Cindy did here. Okay, we're gonna try to do this uh, without any staples in it. So I'm gonna glue it down on one side and fold it over. You could use stainless steel or a Manel staples because this is an exterior application. We don't want them rusting. You could also plump up your foam with polyester batting, which is not shown in this video. To marry the two ends, we will leave the opposite side of the foam wide and overlap the two sides, gluing them in place. Then with a straight edge, we will cut the two layers of foam somewhere close to the center of the assembly and pull away the top extra foam and then lift and pull away the strip on the bottom side. This makes a very smooth seam joining the two ends of the polyurethane foam with fabric backing together. For cushions, it's not uncommon to use polyester batting as we discussed earlier, but for upholstery applications like this, we like using this sew foam, or what Sarah calls polyurethane foam with fabric backing. We think it looks better with upholstery jobs like this. Here at the corner, I'm going to wrap this kind of like a present. Just cut this excess off and then meet the ends together with a little bit of glue. Super 77 spray adhesive is not really very permanent and its bond is semi-average. Remember, all we're trying to do is hold this sew foam in place so that when the cover is installed it stays. And then the cover will do the job of holding it. Now all we have to do is stuff this assembly inside the cover we just made. That's coming up next. We have this all wrapped with the sew foam on all four sides so I can insert it into the cover. If we did it right, it should be a very tight fitting cover that typically looks best. Okay, uh, you want to make sure that your seam is all to one side um, when you put this in. It definitely looks different if it's not, it gets a little ridge in it. You can see how right here I have the seam on this side. And if I move it to this side, you can see how much better it looks. Here you can see how the zipper slider pushes into that pocket that is left unsewn. When zipping it shut, if anything looks off, open it back up and push the foam or the cover around until it looks nice and straight. Coming up next is the materials list and tools that we use to complete this backrest cushion. At Sarite, you will find many great colors and brands of marine seating vinyl fabrics. Check them out at www.sarite.com. To see more project tutorials that are similar to this one, click on a video here. In the next few months, you will see multiple new tutorial videos for the 2016 Project Boat, which is a 1982 Regal Ambassador 245XL. Upcoming projects include installing carpet style headliner, foam backed headliner, B berth cushions, cushions with a backer board, reupholstering a folding helm seat upholstered side panels, lounge cushions, 
luxury woven vinyl flooring, and many more. Be sure to subscribe to the Say Right YouTube channel and watch for them on the Say Right website. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Say Right, thanks for watching.